And uh, how uh, how have advances advances in performance capture opened up a bit what you were able to do at House of Moves? Oh, I can tell you, I'm so excited about where uh, performance capture has, has gone on this project. And we've always at Treyarch tried to push it a um, little step further each time, each time. And I think for the first time, we've really nailed the emotional side of things, which for the story we had, we had to. We didn't have a choice in that respect. Because if we couldn't have actually authentically replicated the emotion of the actor's performances, we would not have been able to pull off this story because that, it's all rooted in, in sort of human emotion. So when we're, when we're filming these scenes now on the motion capture stage, we can actually in real time film the actor's body movements, record his voice and actually record his facial movements all at the same time. But not just for one actor, we can actually get all the, te all the actors together and do an entire scene in one take, which I can tell you just opens up so many creative opportunities for the quality of what these guys are doing because when they start feeding off each other and they're actually really acting as as the performers within the scene it's just it's just so much better so much more authentic and speaking of that how many actors can you direct on stage at once and what impact had how much impact has that had on storytelling so we usually we usually limit it to about five or six but i can tell you with the way the way the story was was written and told we never really have uh, more people, certainly more key people in a scene than that. So in that respect, it actually wasn't restrictive at all. And it actually g gives us the confidence to actually create scenes that have high emotional impact because you're not going to have to film each person separately and just hope that it all kind of gels together. You know there and then when you're filming this thing if it's going to work or not. And I can tell you some of the, some of the scenes in the game, I mean, I don't, obviously won't give any spoilers away, but there's, there's one scene in particular I'm thinking about, about halfway through, where it's such, it's such a sort of an emotional roller coaster for the characters involved, and it's sort of like a completion of the arcs of, of characters, even from the very first Black Ops game, all in a very intense scene. I would not have wanted to do that scene if I didn't have this technology available, because we just couldn't pull off the performance. And how much of a commitment did you need from these actors for a performance capture? Oh, it's, 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 a, it's an insane level of commitment, actually. I mean, let me give you an example of um, you know, Kamar de los Reyes, who plays Raul Menendez. Like, he's lived this character now for, for, I don't know how long. I was even, the funny thing was, I even, I showed him the final version of the game, actually, about two days ago. And it's the first time he'd seen the completed version of a lot of his scenes. And it was almost cathartic to him, because he'd invested himself so heavily in the pre-production of this, and he'd, he'd assumed the character himself. I mean, we've been wrapped shooting with him now for a, a, probably about two months, but he still hadn't let a lot of the stuff go. It was still within him. And watching him, him watching the footage that I showed him was cathartic for him, and you could, you could see it sort of seeping out of him. And that's, that's actually the level of investment that's needed for these believable performances. And, you know, you look at what, uh, you know, James Burns did and Rich McDonald and Michael Rooker and the re it's just, I could not have asked more from those guys. They really gave it their all. I'm really proud of how, how their work turned out. And how have you seen the success of Call of Duty impact the type of Hollywood talent you've been able to attract in this game? Yeah, I mean, we've had, um, one, of the, one of the great things about working on a game like Black Ops 2 is that you really do get attention from the real A-list of Hollywood. I mean, um, the, one of the characters in the game is played by Michael Keaton, who I can tell you, I'm such, I mean, I can't tell you how much I am a fan of his work. And to get the opportunity to work with someone like him, you know, he played the first Batman. You know, you look at some of the work he's done with Tim Burton and, and his films, it's just absolutely, you know, groundbreaking stuff. And, you know, you get to meet him and he's everything you would want him to be. You know, he's so, he's so smart, he's so nice and it's just dream, dream come true. You know, working with um, Sam Worthington, again, you know, he's starred in the biggest movie of all time. He was the star of Avatar. And one of the most humble, nicest, hardworking people I've ever worked with, and I can I can see exactly why James Cameron picked him for that role, because he just gives it his all, and he would co he would come to me uh, many times after we do the scenes, and I'm, I'm perfectly happy with his performance, and he'd come and he'd be like, Dave, so let me see it, let me see it, 
and then we'd show it to him and he's like, are you okay with that? So are you sure? And it's like, they, they actually give this level of commitment now. It's not, but sometimes there's a perception that celebrities, you know, may come onto a game and just sort of phone it in because it's a video game or something like that. And it does occasionally happen. But I can tell you our experience, you know, working with, um, you know, Gary Oldman and Sam and, and Michael uh, Keaton, it's just, yeah, these guys are into it. Speaking of uh, Mason's character, how has his character evolved from the past game? Oh, Alex Mason's character, I mean, people are going to be, I think, I think I would describe it as astonished when they see sort of how Alex Mason's character has evolved from the first game. One of the, one of the fascinating relationships for me in the game is actually the relationship between Alex Mason and his son, David Mason. And when you first see them in the game, you actually see David Mason as a seven-year-old boy. And you see how Alex Mason interacts with him, which I loved, you know, because these, you know, Alex Mason's sort of like your hero soldier, right? And how does someone like that actually sort of interact with a, with a young boy? It's kind of out of his comfort zone a little bit almost. And, you know, we sort of take that relationship and we, we run with it. And when you see how some of these things uh, turn out, it's, uh, it's pretty powerful stuff.